Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Let's pick up where we left off. Thus far, we've lo been looking at vectors in polar coordinates. We've identified position, velocity, and acceleration. We identified the velocity by looking at the derivative of the position, right here. Likewise, we can identify the acceleration by looking at the derivative of the velocity. In our most recent module, we looked at it keeping the radius constant. Today, we're going to allow the radius to change and we're going to take the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. If we do that, we end up with quite a handful. r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the radial direction plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot e theta. Let's try and understand what each of these terms means. Now we've already covered this term right here. This was our centripetal acceleration. Let's look at what each of these terms mean. It means we have an r theta dot squared in the radial direction. This, if you recall, that's our centripetal acceleration. Secondly, we already know that our r theta double dot in the theta direction, this is going to be our angular acceleration. The next term that's new to us is r double dot er. This is the acceleration we would see when something is going directly away from us. Finally, 2 r dot theta dot is some funky kind of combination between that happens when you have an angular velocity as well as a radial velocity. Let's shift down and rewrite these so we can get a better intuition for what each of these terms does. Here we go. First, let's look at centripetal acceleration. This would be what we would see if we have some string attached to some rock out here, and it's moving with some angular velocity. If we draw the free body diagram, we'd have our rock with some tension in the wire, and we'd say that the tension in the wire equals the mass times the acceleration. All the terms would be zero in this acceleration, except for r theta dot squared. Next, we can imagine angular acceleration. For this setup, we're going to have some, once again, some pivot, some circular motion, and this time there's going to be a rod, that, a massless rod, infinitely stiff, that's going to go out to some, um, some particle. And at time zero, we have a, um, a zero velocity, but we have an angular acceleration. We'll say it's some constant and um, the angular acceleration of zero equals zero. Now, if that's the case, the only term, we have some radius and we have theta double dot. The only term that's going to be relevant is this one right here. If that's the case, we draw our free body diagram. The rod is applying some force as a vector. We have our free body diagram. We can say that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We know the acceleration. That is simply r theta double dot in the theta direction. So the force is only in the angular direction. So in other words here, the force is only acting in this direction. There's no radial component. Finally, let's take a look at our radial acceleration. We can imagine, once again, we're, um, you know, there's no gravity. We have some sort of uh, rod 
and the rod is just sitting there. So the acceler or the angular velocity is zero and the acceleration is zero. But what we have here is um, we have some particle here and we're applying a force to push it out there. In this case, we draw our free body diagram. We have some applied force. The applied force equals the mass times acceleration. We look up here and we see that the only term that's valid here is our double dot. That said, we see mass times, whoops, mass times r double dot in the er direction. Oh, and my apologies up here. I seem to have forgotten my mass, so these will all be corrected in that capacity. So each of these first three can be interpreted by eliminating all other terms besides their relevant terms. So we can identify centripetal acceleration, we can get angular acceleration, and we can get radial acceleration by itself. To get Coriolis acceleration by itself is a horse of a different color. We'll take that on in our next video module. So in summary, we've outlined the total acceleration vector in polar coordinates for all motion, not just radial motion. And we've looked at um, the centripetal acceleration, we've looked at the angular acceleration, and we've looked at the radial acceleration to try to understand at an intuitive level what they mean. On our next video module, we'll take a look at Coriolis acceleration. I look forward to seeing you then.